Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, I would like to thank you for joining today's webcast, which is the first episode of the series, What's New in Pure Variant 6.0. This episode focuses on the new Pure Variant web client, specifically on its capabilities and advantages. So with this, my name is Shivani Hegde, working as a field application engineer at Pure Systems, and I will be the moderator for today's webcast. I'd like to now introduce Rachna, our presenter for the day from Pure Systems. She works with us for consulting and FAE activities, where she shares her knowledge to help customers with their journey towards systematic variant management approach. So in the, the next slide, you see an overview of the upcoming webcast. Today, we will see how the Pure Variance uh, web client works and its benefits. As some of you might know, previously, model viewer and model editor was part of the Pure Variance web components, which enabled viewing feature models, variant models, and supported the configuration of variant models via the web interface. Now, we have greatly extended its functionalities and we have the new Pure Variance Web Client. Pure Variance Web Client not only includes all the previous functionalities, but also zero installation efforts, seamless accessibility, easy deployment with reduced complexity using containerization, containerization technology and a lot more. Please note that this does not replace the desktop client. Both are available for users to access the pure variance models on a model server. They can even be used in parallel by the users. So in this webcast, we will see how to accomplish the most common pure variance related task using the pure variance web client. And the upcoming webcast that your episodes that you'll see will now focus on the new connectors and the new capabilities of pure variance 6.0. So now in this slide, as you see, you can find all the upcoming webcasts on our website. They are recorded and uploaded on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions during the session, please feel free to post them in the chat. Only our webcast team will be able to see your questions. We will collect them and answer them in a Q&A session that is at the end of the webcast. And in case there are any open questions left after the session, we will contact you to have a follow up. So with this, I would like to now hand it over to Rachna, who will now take you through the demonstration of the Pure Variance web client. Thank you so much, Shivani. So as Shivani mentioned, I will now take you all to have a look at the capabilities of the web client. First off, we are going to start with talking about the feature models in the web client. Today, I'm going to talk about the external Carlite product line as an example. Assuming that I hold the role of a product line engineer and I am responsible for the maintenance of the feature models, let's see what does web client have to provide us in this case. What you see here right now is the interface of the web client and at the moment we are into the Vadent project, which is called Automotive Demo Carlite. And from here, I can switch the project or the revision. Since I'm in the correct place right now, I do not change any of it and would directly like to move to the functional features feature model, where I would now add in a new feature. In order to do that, I hover over the functional features feature model and click on the pencil icon. After clicking on the pencil icon, it will now open the feature model tree for me. As you can see, I can use the plus icon over here to expand all of my features, wherein you can have a look at the parent features, the child features, the attributes, the different relations, as well as the values that these attributes hold. Or I can use the minus sign to collapse it. Now, moving on, I will now like to add a child feature in the regions feature. Taking North America as my parent feature, I will hover over it and click on create feature. After doing so, a dialog box will now open up, which will ask me about the unique name and optionally the visible name of my feature. In this case, I will start typing USA and the variation type that I would want to choose in this case is or. 
after doing that i save once i save you will now see that usa has been created as a child feature to the parent feature called north america moving on i would now like to display how can you build or create relations between different features within a feature model in order to do that i will take the example of the feature usa and using the menus that i have here i will click on create relation after doing so a dialog box will now open up wherein i have the type of relation which is requires in this case and i have to now start typing the target feature in here i start typing hazard warning and all the available options will pop up i can now click on hazard warning and click on save by doing so the moment i expand the feature usa you will see that a requires relation has been created with another feature called hazard warning moving on once my feature model has been updated i will now make use of the feature model to configure my variant model and how can i do that now i will first of go to the configuration space this is the place where all the variant models are stored in pure variants as you can see we have some existing variant models in here but i would like to start with creating a new variant model in order to do that i click on create variant model a dialog box will now open up where in first it is asking me about the name that i would like to add as a part of my variant after doing that it is now asking me which model would i like to inherit some of the features in my existing variant model since i want to build this model from scratch i would not add any of the inherited features and click on next after clicking on next it is asking me about two different configuration modes available here one is the full configuration and the second is the partial configuration full configuration can be used in cases where i have a validated variant model whereas partial configuration can be used in cases where you still have open decisions to be made moving on i will click on finish and my variant model has now been created after creating the variant model i'll hover over it and click on the pencil icon to go inside my variant model to validate it in order to do that on the left hand side you can see that i have some small red crosses these red crosses basically symbolize that i still have some selections to make in order to make it a validated variant model i would start with making some selections in here in terms of the region i will pick north america as the region for this variant model further on i would now like to pick usa as the region under north america but what i would also like to show you here is that since usa shares a requires relation with another feature called hazard warning the moment i check usa hazard warning which is a part of the parent feature driver assistance will also get automatically selected this is happening because of the auto resolving which is working in the back end furthermore i can now click on the errors on the right hand side which is letting me know about the open alternatives for the decisions that i'm yet to make let's say i click on the first open alternative and in my feature model it will directly take me to the place where i have to make a selection which was high beam in this case once again clicking on it it is taking me to select between xenon and halogen under the feature low beam i am now making use of the search functionality to look for another feature which is led in this case and by clicking on the check box now i have configured my variant model which is highlight usa in this case moving on i would now like to compare the different variant models that i have and in order to do that i will once again go back to my configuration space and click on the matrix view and once the matrix view opens on the left hand side you can see that i have all the model elements available in here where i have the parent features the child features the attributes and the values that these attributes hold whereas on the right hand side you can see the different variant models that i have in here and the features which are a part of each of these variant models moving on i can also make use of the filter functionality available over here and for the moment i pick up 
differences. And once I click on it, you will be able to see how the different variant models differ from each other. Okay, so once we are done with the variant model, we will now want to derive a variant specific requirement document. And in order to do that, we have to perform a transformation. To perform a transformation on the left hand side, you can see that I have my highlight USA variant model open. And on the right hand side, I will go and click on the run transformation icon. Once I click on it, a transformation dialog box will open up wherein it will ask me to select the kind of transformation I want to perform. Once I do that, it asks me to start the job. It is called start job for a reason because while the transformation is being performed, you can either add multiple transformations over here or keep on continuing with your work in the back. The transformation dashboard available over here also gives us information about the stage at which the transformation is. And once a successful transformation has been performed, it would let you know that now you have your variant specific asset ready. Okay, now I would once again like to sum up and let you know about the benefits of using the Pure Variance web client. To start with, we offer installation free access to all of our users, which means that the users can now create, edit all of the feature models as well as the variant models, compare the different variant models in a specific workspace, as well as perform transformations to get the variant specific asset. And all of this can be done without having to install anything on the client side. Moving on, we now have a simplified user interface, and this is especially helpful to the users who are not using the tool on an everyday basis. So therefore, the user interface, which is now simplified, is intuitive in nature. Thirdly, we have a seamless integration with the third-party web-based engineering tools, which means now you can use the same browser via third-party web-based engineering tool as well as the web client they are running and have a seamless integration between them. Last but not the least, we now offer the read-only users with a free access, which means that all the users who only have the read-only access will not be drawing any extra license from pure variants. Now, we have seen the demonstration of what are the capabilities of the web client. And now I would like to talk about how easy it is to deploy this. Currently, we have four deployment templates. And all of these deployment templates are as easy as plug and play. All you have to do is pick a specific deployment template, configure it, and it is ready to be deployed. In order to achieve this, we have containerized deliveries. The templates over here are all Docker-based. The servers and the services held in here are containerized, and hence, the product can be easily deployed. Secondly, it is easily configurable. For example, to deploy web client, all you have to do is just select a specific service, that is web client in this case, and it can be deployed. Then this deployment can happen either on your local server machines or it can also be deployed on the cloud. Because we are Docker-based deployment, we can quickly update the security issues related to servers like changing the installer packages, etc., and having the servers and services up to date. The web client is in the front end for users, whereas the model server and the databases we have are in the back end. And it is critical to note that these things can now be updated independently. Moving on, we are now going to talk about the web-based transformation. So as you can see, we have the web client and the Docker deployment available. This leads us in performing transformations parallelly. That means you can now perform multiple transformations at once for the three web-based engineering tools that we support at the moment namely Polarin, CodeBeamer, and Doors Next. And with this, the demonstration of the Carlite example in web client is what I have shown you. And now I would like to hand over to Shivani to see if we have some additional questions from our participants. 
Thank you, Rachna. Uh, so yeah, uh, so now is the question answer session. Please uh, feel free to post any questions in our chat system. Only our webcast team can see it. So hmm, let's check if we have any questions. OK, so we have a question, Rachna. So uh, will a web client draw a license for users with read-only access? Uh, this is a nice question. So as I mentioned in one of the benefits of using web client, uh, all the users which only have the read-only access will not be drawing any extra licenses. OK. I hope that's, yeah. Thank you. And um, hmm. so yeah, we have another question. Um, will the deployment also be available for Kubernetes? Uh, at the moment, we have the Docker deployment available, and very soon we would be available for Kubernetes as well. Okay, thank you. And yeah, I think we can give another few seconds. You all can pose any more questions if you all have. Okay. So, okay, so we have no more questions left. Uh, so with this, we have reached to the, uh, to the end of today's webcast. Thank you once again, for everyone for joining in today's webcast and y'all can, yeah, have, have, have a view at the recording in our YouTube channel. So thank you once again. Thank you everyone. Thank you.